As you can see, the error message box shows regardless at the top of the form. We can simply make it to be visible only when there is an actual error. Okay, let's create a property called error inside the object that was returned by the data function. Set its initial value to an empty string. When the error property contains an empty string, the error message element will be hidden. Otherwise, it will be visible with the error text. Pretty straightforward. So I can easily toggle the error message element by adding a view directive called view hyphen show to it. Inside the starting tag equals double quotes error. In here, the name error is referring to the property name error here. Then in between the tags, add the actual error text using double curly braces and the property name. In the locator button pressed function, inside the error arrow function, which is the second argument of get current location, set error message to the error property by adding this dot error equals error, which is an argument up here dot message. You would need to use this keyword in front of any property which is declared inside the data function, similar to calling a function that was declared in the methods object that we saw in the earlier lesson. In the else statement, do the same. This dot error equals. Let's set the error message inside get address from function as well. The first one is inside then function if block this dot error equals response dot data dot error message and the last one is inside the catch block again this dot error equals error dot message that's it let's try it out to get the error message i'm going to deny the permission then the error message element shows up with the text that's awesome Sometimes getting user location will take a few seconds depending on various factors such as internet connectivity, user computer speed, and so on. It would be nice if we show the spinner until the user gets an actual address or error message. Luckily, we can add a spinner animation quickly on the right side of the input field using a semantic UA class called loading. Let's take a look at how to implement that. Inside the input container, I'm going to add loading class along with other classes. And you can see the spinner inside the locator button. What I want to do is to add this loading class dynamically whenever there is a delay in getting the user location. So the first, I'm going to get rid of the loading class from the input container, then create a property called spinner inside the data function. This is the property I'm going to use to add or remove the loading class dynamically from the input container and set its initial value to false so that the spinner is not visible by default. Let's add loading class to the input container when the spinner property is true. The way you do is before the end of the starting tag of the input container, add colon class equals inside double quotes, add a pair of curly braces, in there, loading colon spinner. The first value loading is referring to the class that I want to add it to this element if the second value is true, which is the spinner property. Let's set spinner to true at the top of the located button pressed function. I'm going to say this dot spinner equals true. This way, as soon as the user presses the located button, the spinner becomes visible. Nice. Let's hide the spinner as soon as we get an actual address or error by adding this dot spinner equals false to those places. One more thing worth point out here about the error is let's say whenever the user denies the permission to access the location, 
you get a message like user denied geolocation. Sometimes it's recommended to use your own error message depending on the situation. In this case, rather than saying user denied geolocation, I'm going to say locator is unable to find your address. Please type your address manually, which will direct the user to what to do next. But we don't have the autocomplete functionality yet which is what I'm going to cover in the next video. Hey, if you want to know more about Google Maps API and how you can use it to enhance location-based services in your JavaScript or Vue.js app, check out my course link in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.